But people have bad estate plans. We have to spend forever finding their relatives. Yeah. Right. So James, yesterday so you spent the day. I spent a lot of time. James. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of time trying to locate. So it's our clients, um, or brothers and sisters, and their families, mm -hmm. right? You said like you were like the guy at your last job. You used to be like the guy that people would go to. Oh to yeah, help. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in, in past jobs, it was like, okay, we need to find an address to serve this person. Yeah. How are we going to do this? <laughs> yeah, so I think I think my crowning achievement was the one where we – it was a guy who was out of state, mm -hmm. and we kept trying, and the sheriff kept coming back saying, like, we, we don't know who this person is. We've never heard of them before. We, we, we don't know. I found them – all right, I went on Facebook. Yes. I found a Facebook account with the same name. It was the woman's Facebook with this dude. They referenced him by name, so I was able to, like, like okay, this is what this guy looks like. And then they had like something geotagged. So I guess like, okay, so there's yes. this general vicinity. So I went through the counties around that vicinity looking through criminal database records. And eventually I found where this person had been arrested for riding a four wheeler on a public road and had been issued a ticket. Who yes. hasn't done that? Right. Wait, no. I've had so many four wheeler cases, <laughs> yeah. but, but but this is before I was in Georgia and got even more four wheeler cases. Four wheelers you know? are really fun. I don't know if yeah. you're anti four wheeler, I've never Steven. Done a four -wheeler. What? Oh my god, definitely get death, on one. Sometime. Death traps. I'm starkly pro four wheeler. And I drive my <laughs> yeah, I mean I've, I've heard it's great. I, I drive I've on paved it. roads, which generally. <laughs> but then I found his mugshot, and yeah. I confirmed that it was the person. So yeah. we and then so like we used the address on the ticket, and they were served the next week. Gotcha. Just wow. Boom. That's got amazing. It. They were served, and then they didn't come to court. So we got our our order, restraining order by default. And Your so next like, career could be like a PI. Stuff. You could be I like could totally a, be a PI. Yeah. That's dope. Except there's a lot of like waiting outside of stuff. If you're gonna be a PI, you have to smoke cigarettes. You have to have <laughs> you have to have a door that's got frosted glass with your name on it <laughs> and PI, and it has to be like a little bit off. <laughs> So that people know that you know what are you're not some <laughs> fancy operation. And you have to, you've have got, got you've got grit. And hey yeah. Noah, do you know what time it is? What time is it, Steven? It's time to talk about death and taxes. Ba -da 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 -da. I'm changing it this way. Oh, oh. hey, <laughs> I don't know how to proceed. Caught me off guard. Guys, welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes, the only show on the internet hosted by us where we talk about death and taxes, the two things that Benjamin Franklin said were inevitable in life. Um, I'm sitting down with Steven Scriber and James Champlin. Guys, introduce yourselves. What are your credentials like? That's My name I mean. is Steven Scriber. <laughs> Look, My energy so level is dropping. <laughs> um, oh no, I am a lawyer. I own Modern Estate Planning um, by Scriber Law Group. I've been doing law for about nine years um essay playing off from most of that time um but we help people get their shit together and also and people die and their shit's not together we help sort it out so yeah and my name is james champlin i'm also an attorney i've been practicing for about eight years uh, i've done a little bit of a couple different things criminal defense legal aid and now estate planning and probate yeah. So cool. Um, on this show, we talk about all things law, but mostly related to probate, wills, trusts, that sort of thing. Um, also, guys, hey, if you plan on dying in the future, which I think you probably should. You should. That's at, a some, safe, at, at some point. That's yeah. a safe plan to make. <laughs> you should uh, contact us before you do. You can do that by visiting our website, modernestateplanning.com, or giving us a call, 404-939-7562. Send us an email, info at modernestateplanning.com, um, and those are the three ways that you can well really just the call and the email um but that's how you get real legal advice from us did we um, just wrap up the episode no this is i was thinking we do a call at the top oh, for people okay. who and also don't call episode. me after it's been a great episode <laughs> I, I really don't call me after well actually you die. no 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 call us after you die i don't want to see a ghost well one of you gets to call me after you die but no one else does call us <laughs> call us after you die tell us how you did it and tell us what's going on we're gonna write a book yes i'll <laughs> close it yes Oh, you, yeah. you get, I get one dead client. Our, That's we all wrote I our get. first ebook. So anyway, the next if, one's about ghosts. If you call us after you die, yeah. um, 
we will do an estate plan for a loved one of your choice. Yeah. Uh, for free. That's for free. a great promotion. Uh, and and uh, I want a part of her book rights. A after, bit. after we write the book. <laughs> and I hope you're named Casper and you're friendly. Because anyway. Because that would be great. The reason I mentioned. And not a child. The reason I mentioned <laughs> the way to get a hold of us is because none of the advice that we offer on this show is actual legal advice. If you want real legal advice, we would love to give it to you. But that's how you contact us in order for that to happen. Um, please don't act on the things that we say here. Yeah. It's more so for fun. This is this isn't advice. This is commentary. Yeah. This is yes. Commentary. It yes. It's yes. It's Making it's comments. It's law based entertainment. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yes. I love it. Our first piece of law based entertainment comes from uh, a local newspaper article that Stephen sent, which is fantastic. Here we go. More than <laughs> one person shared this article with me because I thought it was, it was like this is up your alley, Stephen. <laughs> the title the title of this article is Cheetah Strip Club passes into a family trust after owner dies. Um, Bill Haggard, uh, the longtime owner of a storied Atlanta strip club and restaurant, has died, leaving behind a piece of property developers have long waved handfuls of cash at. The cheetah is in a trust left to family members who will continue to operate it, says Haggard's club manager. Manager and trust partner Jack Braglia. Um, Hago died on October 27th. Rest in peace. Um, his plans, uh, his plans, and his estate were to continue to run the business as long as it's feasible to allow his children to make some money and have income. And eventually, when the time comes, right, um, when the time is right to sell it, Braglia told the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Um, what great planning. Yeah, so Stephen, talk, to, okay, talk a little bit about it. There's two reasons why people shared this article with me. One, I was like, regular everyone, this first time I did an estate plan, it was in a strip club, not the cheetah, some, some more much, much seedier. So I've like... The cheetah is very nice. It, it, of, of all strip clubs, it was very nice, uh, from what I hear. Cause I, I had very good things. I had a client... Oh, sorry, I, well, sorry, my My... Roommate, I had a roommate at a time who's also a lawyer. His he had a client who worked at the Cheetah, and she paid. Okay, we were at the court together. We were doing a case. Elsa's hell. Elsa's watching him do his job, and she got he. She paid him in cash, and then she then he. I watched him take that cash. It was like it was on fire. <laughs> we were like stripper cash, and he literally turned to me and gave me his half of the rent in oh my cash God. immediately. It's like thanks for the thanks for the cash because <laughs> every time a, every time you get cash from a stripper, it raises the question. Yeah, does this come from the ATM or your like yeah or your the attire? Screen, yeah, <laughs> he, he wasn't. Mm. Was this on a ground? What did you recently? proceed to do with the cash? I took it to the ATM and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't just, think about it too I, much I, yeah, and you, wash you, my hands. I mean, frankly, nothing's gonna happen to a banknote at a strip club that's going to make me think it's any or, uh, dirtier than it already was. Yeah, already clear. So it's probably already cocaine on it well before it came <laughs> yeah, to the stripper. No. Like well money, before. money is gross. It has nothing to do with. Oh with no, it's the just, fact it's that it's coming from a dancer. You think about it very, <laughs> very, viscerally. very viscerally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Like instead of like having this knowledge in the back of your head that at some point this bill probably touched Some, someone's bathing suit area. Yeah. Now you think it's yeah, this person. Now yeah. the, the, the now odds of it have just gone up dramatically. I and she it. was yeah, super, the veil is pierced. She was yeah. super <laughs> nice. I think of veil. all the people the I've ignorance. met with, I could easily see how she was successful at it. Yeah. Without naming any idea. But also the so, good part about this thing is yeah. though. Um, is that the trust? Because normally, with if she didn't have it in a trust, even if he conveyed it by will, um, the the potential cost in issues with probate may have fucked it up so that they had to sell the business to pay legal fees and dispute settle disputes. The upside of the trust is that it avoided probate. He already had instructions in place. Already had a successor trustee. And it was like nothing had happened with yeah. the business overall. So basically, the 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 business wasn't really. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the business wasn't in his name. It was in the name of the trust. The, right? He probably assigned a business to a trust. It looks like. Gotcha. Right. So the so, trust owns the business, and then when he passes away, it's not a big deal. The business is, now it's part of the trust. Right. Yeah. And now he wants to be like the income goes to my kids. You have some trustee. Maybe it's one of his kids. Maybe it's a professional trustee or his lawyer. It doesn't really matter. Whoever it is keeps the business going. Does he have and to the income pay, gets divided? Does he have to pay a bunch of taxes? On the business, like, um, does his estate have to pay taxes on the business well, after he's dead? And it's in depends the trust? on what the business is. If the, if the trust was good, probably not. 
Um, and you know, the business was worth eleven and a half million dollars. It's not subject to federal state taxation anyway. I if they, I don't know if they own their building or rent it. It sounds like if they're throwing money at it, they, they must own it. Own it. it sounds yeah. like they own the land. So yeah. easily between a business and the land, you might be looking at an estate tax issue because that's a real isn't a location that keeps getting more and more expensive. So even if they close the strip club down, much to the much to the a tragedy, um, only but if, you know if they did it. Um, the land itself would probably justify keeping it in trust to mm -hmm. to maximize the value of it to the heirs, especially if they are cool with waiting. Yeah, yeah, like if they don't need the money right now, if they're if they're comfortable, which I assume if, if they've planned enough to have it already in a trust with a plan, there's they're, they're yeah. gonna be okay. I assume, so. and I don't know much about the economy of strip clubs, but I assume it generates solid income. <laughs> Since most of I your so. most of your workers yeah. are contractors, you don't have much overhead. Yeah, you just have to keep the building and the lights on. And maybe with COVID, it, mu it must have COVID oh, must man. have taken I'm a hit. Sure it, yeah, I'm sure Not COVID enough. hurt it. Um, although I don't know if that's uh, one of those non-essential businesses that we're like, no, we can't. <laughs> although as we've kind of seen businesses come back, I don't think that. Oh, like, I'm sure I bounced back super fast. Yeah, I don't think that uh, the the people, the attendees of a strip club, probably aren't super like careful about like six feet apart. Like, one of the, I, I mean, they're probably pretty excited to be wearing masks. One of the oh god, it, Whoa, I, I, that's I, actually I, very that, real. No yeah, like, thoughts. Like rather not. Anyway, no one, no one knows who I am here. <laughs> yes, yeah. but yeah. like. I don't know. So let me ask you another question. But um, it's, a, it's a solid business. Yeah. Um, if I you assume. were, if you were, you know, a, a high school age child and you knew your education was being paid for by a strip club, like earnings from a strip club, I'm like, cool. <laughs> you're cool with that? Well, like, no I don't know. Is that a little weird? There voluntarily. Yeah, no, right. I mean, all the strippers I know are fairly into it. I mean, it's a, yeah. Atlanta's one of. I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's like a yeah. I'll say it's like a it's yeah. like a pretty important place in the strip club economy. Mm -hmm. Um, and people come people come here to do it. They do it to pay certain things. Like think about you you help the stripper pay for college. Yeah. I don't, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. no, I mean, like that's got oh, like honestly, a she huge, doesn't own volition. I mean, there's a big stigma attached to it because there's like stereotypes, well, but it, it just so comes here. down from mm -hmm. like. You know, and like, and yeah, like that is real in some situations, but I think for a lot of people, it's super empowering, and and you make really right. good At money. At the cheetah, I'm so, pretty sure it's empowering. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I no, would, and that's based so on the stack of money people walk out with. Yeah, they if if, if they're, they're they're pretty empowered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah you do. You have to be kind of a badass to like be comfortable with doing that, and then oh, like, you I have mean, to have a real strong personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's yeah. awesome. It's, I think it's like yeah. I think it I think it's like kind of propping up some like harmful cultural things right, right? It, it, like potentially it's, it's kind of taking it like you know people say like it's taking advantage of the fact that I mean, that it's men really, like, yeah. like to objectify women yeah it's built on it's misogyny taking, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of built on misogyny and it's kind of propping a lot of that up but I don't know. I, this doesn't seem like something I uh, want to have a super strong yeah. opinion. Yeah, I, I don't. Like kind of be one of those like. I don't think I'm equipped to have a nice yeah. like intellectual yeah. conversation about like the yeah. I mean, there, strip club probably and somewhere. For some reason, I think in Portland, where there must mm -hmm. be like a feminist strip club. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah, I love that idea. <laughs> yeah. That's our next yeah. business, Stephen. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. a man. I have no. Uh, I, mean, I will yeah, no, provide you legal yeah. advice. I'll be like, I will. I will help you estate plan it so that future daughters can have. <laughs> Not your daughters, but someone's <laughs> daughters, should they have that agency. Actually, I do know people who – who was it? Well, I had a friend who will not be named who paid for Columbia being a dominatrix, and that was awesome. Mm -hmm. What? Wait, what? I know people. I know people Columbia. He Columbia went to University. Columbia. Oh, she went to Columbia oh, University, gotcha. but okay. she paid for it being a dominatrix. Oh, so she was. It was really like a, a way of channeling money from rich men to her education, and she got to hit them. So it sounds <laughs> pretty solid. Like as far, I can't think of a downside on it. <laughs> like, this is everyone's consenting. I love this like, show. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, no, but no. I hope she has a trust too. Like, she lives. If she lives, she doesn't live in Georgia. My like, God, I would want to do her estate plan. Yeah. Anyway. Can we offer a special discount to, to, to strippers oh, in the oh, Atlanta yeah. area? Oh, I will totally help strippers out because, it, <laughs> one, they're fun. They, and, and they aren't going to dick around in the details. They're like, I want this A, B, C, D. I've never had a stripper like lead me astray as far as in dealing with client, as a client level. 
like fantastic. I want the one to tell, shoot, 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 who tells me the truth. I was a straight shooter, but that seemed like a weird thing to say. <laughs> um, and then also strip club owners. I mean, having said that, the first Will saying he was shady as fuck, but he had a gun in his desk. He was like, oh, he was ready. For, he was ready for anything to go south. It's like, what's the gun for? It's like you never know. Yeah. You know it's like you do never know. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, someone's like, in there harassing one of his employees. He's gonna get his gun. Yeah. I would. I'd rather have a strip club. Ball. If I was, a, if I was in that business, I would want mm-hmm. my boss to have a gun. And yeah. Hopefully, be on my yeah. side. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. Anyway, you're a great client too. He, he does a safe plan. So if you go to strip club too, I would I would really love your the help. I, w- <laughs> I want to make you the next cheetah. Yeah. Also, we were talking about we were talking about how fun and interesting it would be to interview someone who does own a strip club. So hey, if you guys know anybody who owns a strip club, let us know because we'd love to bring I'll, on the show. I, I, we will literally to go to you. I will sit. We'll set up the cameras and I'll do it in your <laughs> shady office. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that sounds great. No, what are you doing this <laughs> afternoon? Oh, you know, I have to go to a strip club for work. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was in my contract. Uh, uh, as a gay man, it had no interest in me. It's like there's a guy was like, "Do you want to pass?" I'm like, "I'm good." But thank you, thanks for thinking about me. It's like nice <laughs> maybe to some, be thought maybe of. Maybe some drink vouchers for the bar. Yeah, yeah. that might be good. Is, they also have like great like buffets and stuff. Because right? it's like who eats who eats at a strip? That's disgusting. Cool. Okay, no, I'm gonna stick with that on my high horse. Like, I I'm not gonna eat food that close to someone's half-clad body. Look, I, like I'll eat it's like sushi a sushi from a gas station. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do that, and I have done that, and I'll do it again. But you won't eat crab legs at a strip club? No. Come I don't, on. And also, the other real crab. I'm just gonna lean on it. Well, I'm I don't know. Food. I also just, yeah. I, I just get real uncomfortable. Yeah. At me too. At this. At, me too. At, at gentlemen's clubs, and I just. Like there, and I was like, you know what? Good for all the people here who enjoy this. Yeah, I, I need really to go home people. now. Yeah. As someone who has great <laughs> internal body shame of my own, having other people, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like I have need so to many leave. degrees of body shame yeah. in one room. It's like I can't do this. Well, and you know the yeah. one I, I've been, you know, the one that I went, I was like, all right, well, you know, I'll, I was with a big group, and I was like, all right, well, we'll just be here, I'll hang out, and mm-hmm. just get some drinks at the bar. And my friend's like, yeah, I'll get you a drink. He's like, I'll, I'll do two Jack and Coke, and then like pours two little tiny Jack and Cokes, and he's like, that'll be thirty four dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's and crazy. I was like, I'm leaving. Yep. <laughs> yes. I'm out. We've always gone. We've, we've, I've never gone like sincerely before it's always like ironically like oh like what what are we gonna do tonight let's go to the strip club <laughs> and, I like, want, I want, <laughs> i've only been to one for non will signing reasons and it was uh yeah one for will signing reasons and i was not of clear mind <laughs> like, say no more <laughs> yeah all right we're gonna hop off i was this. not a lawyer so yeah. doesn't count we're gonna hop off of this get get to somewhere New topics but get to somewhere where i feel less especially if your business is even slightly, if you're really your business, if your business has expensive real estate, you really need to plan it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a great point. Yeah. Um, cool. Can a last will and testament be handwritten? Simple question. I want to write my last will and testament. There is a by scroll whole subset of law about I, this. It's called holographic wills. I would rather you not handwrite your will, but like I'm not interrupt yeah. James. So. <laughs> It used to be a situation, and, and some states may still have this being the law, where you know a holographic will. If you can show that this was that person's handwriting, then it that helps prove that it's valid. Gotcha. Um, and and that was especially important back before things like computers. Yes. Right. Um, back when you couldn't type something. Right. It had to be handwritten. Right. Um, most states now, you you can do a holographic will. But it still has to follow all the same formalities that you would have to do for a type will. Yes. So, what would some of those formalities like, like be? Two, like two disin- witnesses. So in Georgia, gotcha. two witnesses that are disinterested. Exactly. Because they're not inheriting under the, under the will. Yeah. So so it used to be if you, you could write your own will and sign it and you wouldn't need any witnesses, you wouldn't need anything like that. You could just stick it in your safe. And then they find it like, oh yeah, this is this is this is Bob's handwriting and he signed it. This is his will. It's a holographic will. Yeah. But but now they, they don't do that. As much in, now they they do lean more on the other on the other verification. Fun things though in California we had a this is not too much too much we had an email admitted into probate as a will so really type things or he he, had, he gave very specific That's instructions and intent to make it his will and it was in an email format that he sent to multiple people and the court was like you know what sure good enough as a witness so so and, and, uh, more but more importantly to that part all of his heirs agree to it gotcha so well, it was more like a consent and, and wasn't yeah. there a story about it was like a lumberjack maybe yes it was, it was and, in Canada yeah and the tree my, fell the tree fell on him and he carved his will, his will into yeah. the tree and he carved his will he into the tree as he died and it was that's upheld. sick the court yep. they literally hacked the 
part of the tree trunk off and brought it into the court. This is, yeah. I'm a hundred percent Was that Canada. on? Was that on a podcast? That, was, that might be me. That? It's on our podcast. Yeah, it's on our podcast. Did we already <laughs> talk about that? No, I don't. Know. I talked about I it. I believe. So. I'm not sure if I talked about the podcast, but definitely. But it was like in my trust in the states book. Yeah. And that guy was a badass. That's yeah, super cool. That's crazy. That's he left everything cool. to his wife, I believe. So yeah. his wife was like, "Here's the tree." <laughs> Which, so so the that's a long to way of saying yes. You can handwrite your, you gotcha. your will. I yeah. I would. It's not the optimum solution, but you can. Right. Can I ask some more follow-up questions? Sure. Yeah. Um. Do I need to worry about flowery language or? Can I just write like I want my house to go to my kids? I want my dog to go to my cousin. So I want my any ambiguity. Mm-hmm. So you should flower language is not necessarily required. Like if you have a nominated executor, uh, awareness of who your family is and a decided distribution of your property. I mean that technically meets all of the things, with the caveat that any ambiguity will be filled in by state law. So okay. if Georgia, for example, of Estates require a bond, which like an insurance policy, unless you say otherwise. And most people don't think to put the no bond language in their handwritten will, and so they require their executor to get a bond. Whereas most lawyer wills will say no bond, which just increases the cost. Stuff like that. There'll be like little language things that the state will fill in to, with the intent of safeguarding the estate from various people, but primarily like bad actions of the executor. Yeah, like okay. some of that language is done, I think, to make it a little bit more like memorable and kind of like kind of really bring to mind how serious it is. Mm-hmm. But most of that is just to be super inclusive to make sure that you're covering all your bases yes. so that your will is going to be valid and upheld and it's going to do what you want it to do. Yes, most people, gotcha. people are like, why can't my will be a page? Or like, you can make it a page, but you're going to make it a real pain for your executor. Yeah. So a, a reason... A, a, an average of basic will is probably between four and seven pages from really between maybe three to seven pages for most people if you mm-hmm. want to cover all the things you need to cover. Um, is it is it correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like if if the heirs are kind of cool with it, like a, a handwritten one page deal or even an email seems like it's probably okay. okay. All the all your heirs agree okay, to it is <laughs> makes a lot of things go better. Yeah, so, it does. Yeah, because of all your, if you let's say you're married and have like a kid, and those are your only two heirs under your state's law, and they agree to a distribution to go all the one person, all the other person, courts are happy to accept whatever agreement the heirs have made and put it into force. Mm-hmm. They just want if the parties are happy, then they're happy because that's one fewer case for the court to hear. Right. Um, so if you if you if you don't think anybody's gonna fight, but you probably should still get a will. Is, will you're right? you're counting is, on you're, them giving you the green light after you're dead, right? And you can't control and that. You're, you're planning for the unexpected. Yeah, like you you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know where it's gonna be. You know you don't know by the, by the time that you pass, right? You don't know if the people you think are gonna be heir, your heirs are going to be your heirs. True. Mm-hmm. You know if if somebody's died before you, it's gonna go down their line through their kids, or it could go back. It, it it spreads quickly. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so if no, if you don't get your estate distributed fast or oh, mandled mm-hmm. fast, as, as we could, I can tell you for many many times, I've had estates from. I mean, this is a, I've had pain estates that are recent ones, but I have one where someone died, I think, in 1912, and that yep. we're still working through. Yeah, that's crazy. It's taken like a gazillion years because there's like literally like multiple hundreds, pages of heirs. Hundreds of people yeah. get involved because wow. it just spreads through the family. Yeah, right. P- people die. Each time someone dies, it goes down the line to all their kids. And, and then you have to include – When those kids die, it goes yeah. down to their kids. And, and if those just, kids didn't have wills or whether they had wills, it's yeah. a – and then you jump on your Facebook mess. stalking. And then train. I talk to the Mormons, and they talk and then where once people up, are. Well, yes, yes. And then the <laughs> yeah. Mormons get involved, and you don't want that because <laughs> because for people who haven't listened to the beginning of the episode, the Mormons have yeah. this really cool genealogy yes. network. Yes, yeah. yes. And the, Mormons, that, the Mormons tell me where people are through their well thought out, well planned, well maintained genealogical database. Yes. Yeah. There are a group of people who have very good databases. Utah is very pretty, and yeah. that's about all I have to say about Mormons. One of the best <laughs> Mexican restaurants I've ever eaten at was in Utah. I really? don't believe you. <laughs> it was amazing. That's hilarious. They had, they had, I'm sure it's true. I was like, they I'm had, uh, they had 13 different moles. Wow. And when you came in, they were like, what kind of mole do you want? And I was like, I'm not really sure. And they're like, give me a minute. And they came back out with a plate that had all 13 moles on it. Oh my God, that's so nice. And some chips so I could try it. And so that was my City? favorite. It was in Salt Lake City. That's awesome. I think it was called the Blue Iguana. It was amazing. Are there Mexicans in the Free shout out right there. How diverse is Salt Lake City? It's a, Big city. I mean, it's a big city, but is it diverse? Have you guys seen the book? I don't know. I was there for like a couple days. Okay. Hello. 
My name is Fire John. Oh and yeah, I would like Mormon. to share with you the yeah. most. Of, I did that in a show choir performance. It was fun. Nice. I was the guy that got to stop it halfway through and go, "Hello, would you like to have a free book about Jesus?" And it was great. <laughs> 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 that <Okay>. was me. <laughs> I have nothing to say about religion, but yeah, they have a very good database, <laughs> and they and because of them. Weirdly, a lot of like a few killers have been found because they maintain yeah. databases, really? uh -huh. and then they match it to G DNA databases. So yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Huh. So, but good yeah, stuff. Good, good stuff. stuff. Um, we're gonna shift gears. <laughs> this gear is gonna be very differently flavored than the last gear. Um, we had a gear that last I, year had both strip clubs and Can I say one last thing about handwritten wills? <laughs> yes. And handwritten wills. Don't handwrite your wills because. You may think you have good handwriting. Nobody has good handwriting. <laughs> yes. Oh, for nobody th has good thank handwriting. Thank you for saying that. And and here's the thing, right? Your will needs to be typed because people are eventually probably going to have to scan it, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to use the software to try to pull text out of it for things. Don't handwrite your will. Don't, don't. It makes it so hard. Just... We live in a world where we are literally surrounded by computers. <laughs> type type, type it in, your will. It. Type it. Even, like, go to, go like, to Kinko's. Whatever you are going to scribble. Comic Sans. Whatever yeah. you are going <laughs> to scribble down on the toilet paper in the bathroom to be your will. Just pull out your phone and type it up. And also a favor, if you're going to type it, also try not to print on inkjet. So many people have had smeared let's ink. Not, let's not get but, too but, demanding. But, okay, and if you're going to handwrite, also don't use those gel pens. And all these other things where people have given me Don't things, do it in green. People have given me documents Green's and it's for already suckers. smeared. Like it's Crayola like, marker. How am I going to bring this to you? I'm going to have to file this with a court. Could I do a crayon will? It. If I did like a crayon will on the back of like a Denny's Okay, I'm not going to lie. If I were objecting to a crayon will, I would be like, this is evidence of insanity. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah that, I would that, bite it that way. That would be my... A search and it's like it's objection. It's written in crayon. <laughs> yeah. Count one. No, hold on. Let's say <laughs> let's say I'm having my grand slam and I eat a piece of sausage that's a little bit too big and I'm alone in this Denny's for some reason or, and I sense myself then choking. You, then you and I frantically write well, down. Wait, will. no. Do you not know how to do the Heimlich on yourself? Yeah. You can with the chair. But let's yeah. say I die. But let's say not alone. Let's say the, let's say you have a waitress and one other person to go witness <laughs> this, <laughs> this insane sign. Yeah, will. yeah. You would have to sign your will and then. You can come over and say, sir, would you like to do the Heimlich? And you would say, no, witness my will. <laughs> and if we're, and if then for, you can do it. For some reason, I imagine As long as you for, don't, as long as if your you know, server is the one witnessing your will, you cannot leave the tip as part of your will. <laughs> That's true because now they're interested. Then they'd be interested. You have to gotcha. tip before the will is signed. Okay. But let's say you're with someone and they don't like you and they just watch you die and you're like, that sucks for you. The least you could do is witness my will. <laughs> the least you could do is like, <laughs> the very least. <laughs> They're very self-absorbed. They aren't even noticing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like you're in a Zoom call and you're muted and you're... Uh, uh, so, many so, ways. so don't yeah. handwrite your don't will handwrite and chew your food. Yeah. Chew your food. Be careful. Yeah. Tip your, ser <laughs> tip your servers. Also, yeah, she, that server's had a bad day. She's like, fuck you. I'm going to watch you die for, for that <laughs> shitty tip you left. That is not the Denny's way. Yeah. Is, is I that, love that Denny's. Is that close to Waffle House? Or what, what restaurant is... I guess in a whole other conversation. What, what yeah. restaurant is a staff most likely to watch you die? Uh, what's the one where their whole thing is like they like to yell at you? <laughs> yeah, that's like... The, uh, I wish uh, Dick's Last Resort? Yep. I've seen some of that. Yeah. For some reason, like a debt... I've been to... I Maybe they, would, they would probably save you because legally they probably would have to. To for liability purposes, but like they'll okay. make fun of you. We're gonna shift gears. I'm gonna get sued if I keep We're gonna talking. Shift gears. So gonna like We're gonna shift gears. <laughs> All right, this is a What's very libel? different gear. Um, we yeah, talked about this a little bit, and like I, James, you mentioned this. I don't know if we mentioned this on the podcast, but I think you just might have mentioned it to me um, in passing. Uh, um, the president of the United States has said that he rejects the results of the, the election. This was recorded in November. Yeah, and 11. by the time by the time it goes out, we're probably going to be like, "Oh, how silly were we?" Um, but like, oh, we're it's insane. But you can wait. Uh, but yeah. so, yeah. but so, let me frame it up a little bit. All right, so Joe Biden, President Trump. You know, we have this election. All the votes come in, and all the mail. Over you a know, week ago, Trump says, "Hey, don't mail in your votes." Republicans and they're like okay so they all go to the polls and then like Joe Biden's like hey everybody mail in your polls or votes. votes and so you know as we counted mail in ballots Joe Biden won by a by he won the pop was it a landslide I don't know uh, on, the the mail, the on the mail on the on the mail on the mail on the mail was a landslide yes, it was a massive but even a national change. vote it was a landslide the popular now vote was a we've got or Trump saying margin. hey you know this is phony uh, there's fake ballots there's lots of fraud going on and I reject the results of the election mm. um, I am the president 
are do you think that there is the potential realistically and this isn't a joke but like realistically do you think that like we're close to like a civil war type situation no no Maybe. Okay, I think most people are chicken hawks. I they think, talk a big game, but when it comes time to inconvenience yeah. themselves, I find it hard to believe. I, I don't think we're close to a civil war. I think that there are some parts of the country that would certainly consider doing something violent. Yeah, okay, yeah. I think we're at risk on, of terrorism. Yeah, I think we're at a risk of domestic terrorism. I don't think we're at a risk of civil war necessarily because I think— I think what what we're going to see is a lot of the candidates that are like saying like oh well this was obviously fraud like they they're full of shit and they know that they're full of shit and, but they're doing it because they're appealing to this large to the base. base. Yeah. They should all be embarrassed mostly because they're lying. They should be humiliated. Yes. They should be so embarrassed. Did you see the letter um I, we we're in Georgia and our letter the, the our Republican members of Congress the the House members all wrote a letter to the Secretary of State who's also a Republican. Our two senators did it. Oh yeah two. yeah but this is a this letter is that it was written secretary call, accusing them of whatever and they misspelled they had a typo on the word georgia so they oh they, they delivered it to the george secretary of state oh, and these people on. have the if i'm our secretary <laughs> secretary of state a republican uh, i would frame uh, that letter it's like you fucking loon <laughs> can't even, couldn't even proofread your goddamn letter and, like, how and, dare and, you accuse me of fraud <laughs> these people think they're gonna have a conspiracy and both both of our senators who are in runoffs against yeah. their Democratic candidates, both of whom got caught up in, in COVID stock sale scandals, awful, 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 dumb, mm -hmm. bad. They're both also – they're telling our secretary of state he should resign for not running a fair election. Which is hilarious because they're about to run another election. And Georgia has been getting bluer yeah. and bluer, and, and if you, if yeah, you okay. haven't seen that, then you're not – opening your eyes yes you're you're somewhere in one there are yeah. very red areas right. in georgia there are very red counties but if you're not looking outside of those counties you might think though well, we're just as conservative as ever but no if you look at you know places around atlanta and big cities like it's getting bluer and bluer right and um they're just trying to shift blame onto for their fraud instead of you know, recognizing that the demographic of the state is changing because people are fed up with it, and they may not be that good candidates. Let me yeah. let me <laughs> try to frame this conversation in a way that I think guys... Isaacson would have won another term if he had outrun. But anyway, unrelated. Let me <laughs> let me frame it up so that you guys can share your like legal expertise. Let's say I'm Donald Trump and I want to win the election. I'm going to use the courts. I'm going to leverage the court system, my team of lawyers, and all my money, and I'm going to win the election. What does what do I have to do okay. to win the election? I'm going to open I... the premise that Donald Trump and I are. Is likely to be the next or likely to be the president in January, which is not likely. It's extremely <laughs> okay, unlikely. Yeah, See, this is why. Equally likely. Okay. This is why we got to save those jokes for the God podcast. Damn, I you couldn't land it. So the first well. time you did that, fucking land it. What, so even so told me the this. joke Steven said earlier was. Donald, Donald Trump, Trump and I are equally as likely to be the next president. And then I had a big laugh. And it was a it was great a belly delivery. Laugh. It was solid. It was a good laugh. It was yeah. solid. Now I just blew it. You were in your head. Too. Yeah, just, yeah, I head. thought too hard about it. It was Tried like, I'm going to land this, and yeah. then I did it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, Look, I don't think anybody out there actually – I don't think there's an attorney out there who – honestly thinks that anything they're going to do is going to overturn the election yes yeah. i think that it is a hundred percent posturing and it's taking money from people that want to make a stink for political purposes um so there are actually interesting articles some of the firms representing trump are some of the biggest firms in the country most of them donated and, their, most of the lawyers in those firms donated to biden right hilariously and, <laughs> and there are i mean one of the firms have had several employees quit over the fact that they're taking on these cases. Wow. Jones Day. And, I'm just going to say it. Um, no, the other one. Oh, the other one? one? Yeah, I don't know that Jones Day had anybody quit. Okay. But I do know that there are a lot of people at these firms that are very uncomfortable, and apparently they're having a lot of internal meetings about what's going on because, yeah. And, you, and you know, they've got this posturing like, oh, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. But one article, they were like, you know, the judge actually told the attorney face-to-face, -face, like, are, are you alleging fraud? And they say, at this time, no. Really? Really. Then what wow. are you alleging? And, and they're suing <laughs> yeah. over 529 uncounted ballots in a in a county where Biden won by 150,000 votes. Wow. And and this is one of the lawsuits that they filed. Yes. This is fraud. So, but when they but when they actually are in front of the judge and the lawyers bar, bar membership is on the line, suddenly they're a little bit less likely to uh, you know toe that same line. You, it lawyers tend not to lie to judges knowingly. No. 
unless your clients like me. Yeah. But and we've yeah. and we've all we've all been there where we've had a client that we know is full of shit and we know they're gonna lie and we have to try to deal with that because we can't get out of the case. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and you it's too tell. late. And also, and, you just tell. People. And the classic line is. You know, my client would like to address the court. Yes. My or my client will now provide testimony in narrative form. If your client demands <laughs> right? to go to the stand, you just let them. You, you yeah. ask, "What's your side?" Because <laughs> because you, because you can't have a seat. you can't yeah. help them lie to the court. Right. Yeah. Right. So you know, I can't question my client and help them provide detail to back up something that I think is a lie. But I think what we're seeing here is these firms are are knowingly jumping into something, knowing it's full you of have shit to, either, because it's either, a ton of money. Yeah, either you know, either they are. I guess there's some level where you're like, what does it mean to know? But like, God, great ethics questions of law. But like, do I know? Do I know for sure my yeah. client's lying? No. <laughs> well, but do I think they are? Yes. And I think okay. what yeah. a lot of these firms are saying yeah. is, we, you know, there's a right to file this claim. There are some things that we think are, are odd. But what they're not saying is, you know, this is fraud, black and white. Well, yeah, which why are you seeing that all these claims be so narrow? Yeah, <laughs> right. So they're they're doing these contests where it's not going to make any difference, right? But by fi so they're what they're actually filing is true, right? What they're filing is saying, well, actually, you know, there are this 240 ballots where the address was on the front of it instead of the back of it, like the way it should be, mm -hmm. and those should therefore be thrown out on a technical basis. They argued over technicalities, and that's what they're filing. That has merit, right? I guess. That has merit. It's stupid, it's but it stupid. has merit, yeah. but it's not going to change the outcome of the election yeah. because it's small. Right. But what they're doing is they're doing this for a client who's then stepping outside of the court and going on to the media and saying, this is a stolen election. We're going to overturn it. Look at these lawsuits. So it, it kind of becomes a complicity issue. Yeah, they're of, using uh, these tiny lawsuits yeah. to create a narrative of right. fraud, which doesn't exist. And it's mainly you, for like the media just to kind of stoke mm -hmm. the base. Yeah, because they want to stoke their base and they want to stir up anywhere there, there, there is going to be a runoff. They want people to say like, well, no, this the election is being stolen. So I, I didn't vote in the general, but I got to go vote in the, in the primary. Which is fascinating because it might also okay. have the effect. I have to wonder for some people whether it might depress turnout if you're convinced the election is like it's a Fraudulent matter. account doesn't matter. Yeah. It, or is it going to push more Democratic voters to come out because they're tired of this bullshit? They might vote in person. So I just think it's so terrifying. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I mean, also the Georgia I'm just terrified shocked. that we have two elections. I'm shocked. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another huge thing. We can actually probably talk about that as well. Um, Cause like, I also don't fully understand like the, the, the concept of a runoff election. So oh, don't, we'll worry, get into that. don't worry. It's racist. We'll yeah? come back to it. Okay. <laughs> it's like, let's, it let's, really is. Let's have another conversation about that okay. in a couple seconds here. But, yeah. um, I, I don't know. I was just kind of like shocked at the amount of people who are willing to be like, yeah, this is fraud. Because I mean, I just feel like th like there's a, it is a huge. I mean, but I, fraud I feel is like they're inciting a, violence. Fraud basically. is usually it's like in scary. Law, but, but, fraud, yeah. fraud in law is like almost like a four letter word. Like you, you have to really have mm -hmm. some evidence before you allege someone of knowingly lying to you. Right. right. Like you can't just. There's, there's rules of civil procedure where literally one of the few areas where you have to plead in particularity is in fraud. Right. Is where you, when you're letting someone lie to you, you have to have some iota of evidence that someone knew the facts and then misrepresented them to you. Mm -hmm. And in this case, they haven't. It's it's kind of embarrassing to watch the more the legal profession be involved yeah, with it's, it. It's, it's upsetting. <laughs> yeah, it's very upsetting. Have you guys? Are you guys? I mean, online. I'm I'm friends with a couple uh, people who you know are very very right wing, and just hearing like some of the things that they're sharing, and like looking at like mm -hmm. the things that like they're looking at, like it's shocking and honestly yep. kind of illuminating to like kind of view the world through that uh, yes. lens. I think that so many people just get fed a lot of information that's very one-sided, very biased, and it's hard not to buy into that. And I think that the people shoving that down our throats are doing it for ulterior motive. I think people know that what they're doing is is wrong, it's not true, and they're mm -hmm. doing it anyways because it makes them a lot of money, gets them power, gets them yeah. fame. Yes. Cool. Um, Steven, do you wanna, we're gonna move on to the next portion here. Is the oh, client yeah. here? Oh no, sorry, I just had to. So I'm going to check in. No, you're totally, good. That. you're totally fine. Um, cool. Okay, let's uh, jump to the last segment here. Um, anyway, though, yeah, that's scary. Scary. It's super scary. Scary, frivolous lawsuits. And, it's and scary and it's ridiculous. Posturing. And it's and probably going to lead to violence. And it's, that it's sucks. very upsetting. It definitely yep. le delegitimizes it. I yep. try to put myself in their position, but I also think that maybe I'm the one in a weird ecosystem sometimes. But, yeah. It's, and, and I'll say it right now. You know, if, <laughs> if – if, I, I just I think it's an, it's an embarrassment for the attorneys that are 
knowingly propping up that narrative. Mm -hmm. I think that it's preposterous. Um, I think power to the people that quit their jobs at those firms and walked away rather than undermine democracy. Because mm-hmm. um, frankly, you know, if, if you're working at a firm as well-respected and well-known as Jones Day and you quit over an ethical issue, you're not going to have a problem finding another job. Yeah. No, that's that's not an issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's a that's, pretty that's competitive. Super I mean, you have yeah. People, they'll, they'll bounce back. That's cool. Yeah. So, if and you also, were you could tell most election lawyers, people who specialize in election law, are discrediting these claims and they won't take the cases. You see right. a lot of lawyers who are doing these cases are not election law specialists. Yeah. And, and you know, reason. everybody's had a bad client. Everybody's had a client who's dishonest and it turns to be a nightmare. Like, you know, yes. we've had them. As, as a lawyer, um, we, all, we won't name names. We usually we often jokes, but the first time we realize our client was a liar. Yeah. <laughs> and but, so it's that court. But at <laughs> yeah. a certain point, yeah. like there's, there's a line. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just it's a huge issue for the In profession. this case with Donald Trump, you should kind of assume he's a liar based on the <laughs> fact that he constantly lies. If someone if someone tells you who they are, believe them. Yeah. Or lies about who they are for like the eight thousandth time in this case, believe them. Yeah. This is yeah. this is a tangent that's gonna it's a I yeah, I feel like years topics. ago. I am yeah, yeah. no this is no it's a tangent. Go ahead and shift your topic. No, and we'll t- we'll shift in a second, just but I just on, want to talk about this. This is more of a me thing. Segue and uh, lean forward. I feel like in 2016, right, when Trump was about to get elected and, like, people were, like, you know, saying, hey, like, you know, this is pretty much, like, if you look at, like, you know, Nazi Germany, like, you know, Hitler had a very similar, like, agenda, or not agenda, but there was some similar, like, rhetoric, right? And people sure. on the right, people yeah. on the right were like, that's wild. Like, you are crazy. Throw that idea out completely. Like, you mm-hmm. are overstepping this is giant, crazy hyperbole. But I feel like now it's like, okay, if you were to become an authoritarian leader, what moves would you make differently than Trump isn't making? right now i would be smarter I, yeah i yeah um, <laughs> i would be slightly the way savvier that he did about it. this going I mean, about the way this. that the way i mean i'm not gonna say that he did it because i don't think he's the one calling the shots but i mean it was it you was think super, he's a puppet I, I absolutely think he's a puppet okay but no i mean is he? i think he's not smart enough to like i, I yeah, guess that's i, I, I wouldn't want him as my puppet he is, I mean, legitimately i want someone who was cooler under pressure to be my puppet he is a spotlight magnet and he is a loudspeaker. Yeah. That's what he is. And that's what he's being used for. So he's fed his narrative and he spouts it out using his platform. And I, you know, and, and the way that he, the way that his campaign set this uncertainty up months ago, I mean, you're, like, it's, he did it's not almost it impressive. Out, There's no way he planned it out. He's but a useful the, idiot. His handlers did. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a tool. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it, but I think I, back to your point. <laughs> I did see something saying essentially you have to differentiate because I also I always think the the Hitler uh, <laughs> like the Hitler like, card was, yeah the Hitler card is a is not a card you generally want to Bring throw out. yeah but yeah. like you have to but mean you it. have to like yeah. look at it though you know we always think of like. During the war and after the war, Hitler, you know, like, you know, that, like that end of it where the Holocaust was happening and there's all these horrible, horrible things. And then you also look at like the beginning of his career, Hitler. Right. And, and that's where he's he's setting the stage for that. And the stuff he's doing is not nearly as outrageous. And he could have gone a different authoritarian direction. Yeah, but, but a lot of the steps he took to set up authoritarian rule, you know. I, I think those are being mirrored sometimes. Yeah, so. but I think the you um, Hitler is not useful to me. Putin is way more useful as yeah. like a reference or any yeah. of the yeah. right wing nationalists. And by the way, we have all the pretenses of elections, but one side just can't win. And you could sense yeah. Donald Trump's trying to set that. God, base he wants up. to be Putin so bad. He wants to be Putin, but Putin's smarter than him. <laughs> but like, I, yeah. I, not, it's, yeah. I, it's, Putin, I would love a photo Putin shoot with, with a shirtless Trump on like a horse. <laughs> like, what are the, I don't, the I don't need to see that. <laughs> Remember the Putin shoot? Oh, but but let me see, let like, me go back. Trump like, let me go back like three minutes. <laughs> I feel like I did a lot of like parsing on about like things about Hitler. Yeah. Anytime you see somebody parsing things about Hitler, it always comes out in a certain way. <laughs> and I guess I just want to be super clear on something. Yeah. It's all bad. Yeah, yeah. the, fr- the oh, first yeah. position no is anti there. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. anti Hitler. I'm, <laughs> I'm very What anti-Hitler. a strong stance, guys. <laughs> We're really speaking out. So brave. <laughs> so brave. So but brave. I just don't want it to be a situation where you're like, well what do you mean you're saying that like Hitler beginning wasn't as bad as Hitler at the end. Right. No no he was always bad the whole time. Right. But you can the, say the somebody is acting different. like him at the beginning without saying they're necessarily going to act like him at right. the end. And I mean, the, like to bring the, some at specifics. The, at the zenith. 
Right. But to bring some specifics to, to that, like, like taking or like, like much the, or a, democratic the, system. the oratory style, the, yeah. right? Oratory style, like the, the relationship the, with the, the media, populism, um, populism yeah. the relationship yeah. with like the media, like Hitler kind of like the delegitimized the media well, and, and it's then also like took control of it. It's also pretty interesting that a lot of that base is actually, you know, using phrases that Hitler used. Like, you know, they called someone the Lugan Press, which really, <laughs> yes, uh, somebody at some point I forget who it was, but they were. It was like not someone who's just like a straight up neo Nazi. It was like someone who at the time was it's, trying to be respected. I forget who it was, but yeah, like people were calling the press the Lugan press. It's, it's like lying yeah. press. And that is like just, it's just like straight up Nazi terminology. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was like, it was like statism, but I'm not concerned about it. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's it, it, uh, the, I guess the nationalism, the, the, um, the subtle um, racism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By subtle, subtle, I mean not obl- that subtle. Over, yeah. yeah, the over. Let's the, build a wall. The dog, like, yeah. A mix of dog whistles. Yeah, Mexicans, and re- and some Mexicans whistles. are good people. <laughs> and it's like, what do you mean some? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah. What do you mean? Okay. Um, hopefully we pissed off a lot of people. That'll get us some views. I voted for <laughs> Biden um, if, if we didn't tell. And I think that um, – and I support Ossoff and Warnoff, Warnock, even though Ossoff is by far – are the least yeah, qualified you hate him, person. Which I think is so funny. He's like the he's an empty vessel in so <laughs> many ways, and I'm upset that we're putting him forward to be a senator. But I'm more upset that David Perdue is a senator. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't have any problems with Ossoff, but I I don't. I, I like his commercials. I mean, you can ask like, what's one thing about David Ossoff that you're excited John about? John Ossoff. Exactly. <laughs> I he's like what you would produce in the candidate factory. Exactly. I, yeah, I, I just I saw him and candidate. it was just like, uh, all right. Well, really, I actually Purdue. really like him. I like the attack ads because like it's like I might. I mean, it, had I done research on him, I may have learned something that I would have liked. He's thirty three. He has done nothing in his career so no, he far. Comes that from like a journalism a background. Who cares? I do. I think he's cool. I like journalists, <laughs> man. I know a lot of cool people. Doesn't mean I think they should be senators. <laughs> no, I think he's like. Feels like okay, senator <laughs> feels like. A promotion that's way unjustified. You couldn't that's even really beat funny. Karen Handel in a house seat. I could beat Karen Handel. I'm Everyone not equipped beats Karen Handel in Georgia. David Deal <laughs> beat. Oh, sorry, he, she's an eminently beatable candidate because no one trusts her. And John Ossoff with 23 million dollars couldn't do it. And now we're gonna <laughs> yeah. try and let him win a Senate race. It's like if it's, it's like if I couldn't get a job as like. A nurse, yeah. But I was like, I'm now your surgeon. Yeah. I was like, I want to be your surgeon now. It's like, <laughs> fuck you. That's good. I'm I still like voting. And, and after all that, I still have to vote for him because David produced trash. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Here we go. We're gonna shift uh, gears again. You could cut Big this. Shift. Can you cut that rant? You might want to cut that rant out. We're gonna <laughs> Oscar. Oscar leaves that one on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of this stays in the full episode. Just okay. so you know. Cool. I'm so going like, with that. Wait. Does everything stay one? in when I like the Hitler lean part? in really close to the mic? and tell Oscar to cut things out. Does that stay in? Uh, Does this stay in? I hope so. Please Usually. leave that in. I think it makes it more entertaining to be asked when someone says cut it out and it's still in there. <laughs> like, well, but I feel like at this point it's overused. Yeah, true. Because I, I do know. it so much. But if you watch the full, I think it's fun. It's a little Easter I do it occasionally. Little, okay, can I, we, like also, he, I when have I a hard time watching myself on video. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. When I, do when I don't I have enough five-star reviews, I feel like I won't even make a five-star review on Apple podcast so if you want to step it up yeah guys five star <laughs> reviews apple podcast when i mispronounced mm-hmm. chadwick boseman he totally left that in in the full episode or i don't know it's like brutal it was rough i was like, like, like he, he, he won't he won't complain about it we're fine <laughs> <laughs> we're fine yeah exactly it's not seen by enough people to make a difference we're gonna shift gears <laughs> here we go <clears throat> not yet anyway i'm sorry that is my personal failure and we're gonna I buy some ads we were shifting change. gears we are shifting gears <clears throat> Taking a pause. Okay. You had an Avo question loaded up. Signifying it. Uh, it's Quora, it actually. Phone. I know. Okay. Um, do beneficiaries always supersede those named in the last will and testament? So I wanted to put this question in here because I feel like I, I, I think so I've listened to you, you both enough. Time? I think I've so listened to you both enough. It's a confusing enough. question. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. I, <laughs> you, you sent me the outline, so I actually looked at that one because yeah. I read just the quick question and it made no sense. Yeah. Okay, I'll, so I'll, wait for your so I'll, I'll repeat it and then I'll frame it up for why I put it in here. Do beneficiaries always supersede those names in a last will and um, those named in a last will and testament. Okay. So uh, the reason why I put it in is because I feel like the person means heirs, right? Like, do the heirs, if there are heirs that are not mentioned in the last will and testament, can, you know, does the will precede those heirs? I now think that's what Now we're going to get into asking. a definitional this, issue. But and, I'll let you, is that the whole question or is there yeah, more? Yeah, that's the whole question. This is what I think they mean. Okay. I think they're talking about beneficiaries of things like life insurance policies. 
Gotcha. Okay, that's probably it. So yeah, I, can, I'm I guess we can kind of categorize it. <laughs> no, no, it, no. When I read it, my my knee jerk was the people named in a will are beneficiaries. Like yeah. that, that's yes. a beneficiary. So the lawyer term, beneficiaries are the people who are named in the will. Right. And the heirs are the people who would receive it if there was no will. Right. And then there's gotcha. a further okay. difference between devi de, devices de, devices devices yeah devices. oscar I don't cut know that out when i mispronounce that thing uh so that devices, we bet it. I like that. Devise, there's devices and there's legatees um devices get personal properties legatees get real property is that or i believe is the opposite? so i don't remember but it's like most is people it, like, under, most are you getting under, my stuff or are you getting yeah. my house right so there's all okay. these different terms but what I think that question is going for is, do life insurance beneficiaries always come first before people named in a will? And the answer is yes. Yes. Gotcha. Unless life insurance okay. policy hilariously has the, the beneficiaries are dead or there's a, they fail to name a beneficiary, then it would go to the estate. Gotcha. Right. And then it could be distributed to the beneficiaries of the will. Yeah. Really, like beneficiary is just a term meaning the person who gets the benefit of of an instrument yeah right but, yeah so in the life insurance policy that payout would go to the beneficiary it would never even touch the estate yeah, it's not part of it. it's typically like a contract almost between the insurance company the person who has the insurance policy and the beneficiary those mm -hmm. are people in the relationship and it's not yeah and the only thing the that triggers the death triggers the transfer of money but it's not mm -hmm. part of the probate process and and you, like can, ba you got bank account beneficiaries and any type of asset you have, you can you can add a any financial yeah. account with a bank. Usually, you can add a beneficiary to it. Oh yeah, and you can um, yeah, like you can do a payable on death bank account. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you can you can leave, you can have your life insurance policy go to your estate or a to trust. be distributed, yeah. or like to a trust to be distributed that way. You can do that, but for the most part, if your life insurance policy has a beneficiary listed. That's who it's going to. Yep, gotcha. As long as they're, yeah, yeah, exactly. As long if I as write, still alive. If I write in my will, so let's say that that has happened. Is right? this will let's handwritten say, or typed? <laughs> it is a handwritten. Or I'm sorry, it's a typed will. Okay, it's good. very it's official. A will, it's a handwritten will that you hand to me as a client, it. and I hate you. It's, no, it's so, a, no, it's no. A, Stephen made this will. It's a typed will that I did in papyrus. <laughs> okay, I wrote this. Will. It's Comic Sans. Okay, okay. Yeah. It is a will. Stephen wrote the will. I changed the font to Comic Sans for fun, because um, mm -hmm. I wanted to make the lawyer read it in Comic Sans after I died. Make a way to make a probate court judge and staff attorney hate you. Yeah. They're yeah. like, what is this? It's in it's in Wingdings. Yo, they're that's like, another question. They're gonna go Can back I have my and will demand in the Georgia that's legislator amend the law to like ban certain fonts from your will. <laughs> like um, it's not only is it not legally recognized, but they have the right to bring you back from the dead to like slap you or something. For <laughs> using <laughs> anyway. Um so let's say mm -hmm. let's say that life insurance policy is set up. Um let's say that I mention the life insurance policy specifically in the will that we create together. It's a very official will. Yeah. Um, and so, so let's say that they have two different like beneficiaries listed, right? And the life insurance policy, let's say it's going to go to my, let's say I got divorced, right? And so mm -hmm. at the time I got the life insurance policy, I put my wife's name on You haven't on the updated thing. it? I haven't updated it, but we created a will 10 years later um, where I say the life insurance policy is going to go to my kids. Okay. What happens? Well, what, first of all, this wouldn't have happened with me because I would have yeah. asked you about the life insurance policy. Right. Okay. But let's say you did it, um, or let's say... Let's say you used a one lawyer. of our use competitors. Legal or LegalZoom. Yeah. No, no, no. We're not using oh. any names. Oscar oh. actually cut that out. <laughs> you, Sorry. You, cut you, out does, that, does, does the name beep, of that does site. Does like a beep in it? Yeah. Like a, yeah. yeah, we can't actually call out our, our competitors by name. But let's say you used but, uh, but a yeah. competitor. Let's just use a competitor. Um, but yeah, so essentially you can't transfer in your will what you don't own. So I can leave, this is about the jokes, like I can leave my Fabergé A collection to my brother he will be disappointed to find out that i don't have Doesn't such exist. a collection in the same mm -hmm. way the will can't convey a life insurance policy that goes to somebody else so your ex and ex spouses in georgia can get the insurance policy and some i think a few states divorce severs is presumed to sever beneficiaries uh, I, that is generally not the case in georgia so if you get divorced, you should really check out the life insurance policy. But also with divorce decrees, I th I'll caveat that is a lot of times we'll get divorced. Part of the divorce order says you need to maintain life insurance for your ex-spouse or for your kids really? as part of the mm -hmm. alimony, mm -hmm. spousal support. So there, might be, so there might be reasons <laughs> the ex-spouse is listed on the um, life insurance. Mm -hmm. And even if um, he, they wanted to, they would find someone in um contempt of court if they changed it 
Yeah. Um, so, but, and then generally though, you can't leave anything you didn't own. So anything in the will that you didn't own, it's, it might raise expectations for that beneficiary in the list in the will. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm getting an insurance policy. And you find right. they don't have an insurance policy. Or like That's it, all you'll it exists, but you never owned that money to give. Exactly. Um, so like another example in, in my trust mm-hmm. document that I have, um, to my sister-in-law, I have given, uh, any boxes found in my possession that are labeled secrets for her name. Yeah. Um, and she gets those boxes and whatever is inside of them. <laughs> um, right now, I, I don't have any boxes that have that written on it. Yeah. So if I were to pass away before those boxes making those boxes, then she wouldn't get anything. Gotcha. Yeah. And this is also true. Like if you... Let's say you wrote a will with me and you said, I want my house at this address to go to somebody and then you sell the house for the mm-hmm. most part that the, that line lapses mm-hmm. yep. um, as soon as you get rid of it. But it's, in some cases, there are some ways where it substitutes. Like if you say my personal residence at X, if you sell your personal property, mm-hmm. get another property, then you might swap it in. But for the mm-hmm. most part, if you don't own it, you can't convey it. So right. it sucks for the beneficiary. At well, that no, moment, it's, it's great for the beneficiary. Oh, the beneficiary but then it, insurance, but then it the sucks will, for the sorry. beneficiary. Yeah, on the will, whoever gets on the will, it sucks for. Right. Yeah. This is why lawyers. You see how this theme. terminology is all very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Get a lawyer. Get a, get a lawyer, lawyer. Get a will. This is one right. thing that. Yeah. Hire Steven. Exactly. Does like, yeah. I spent nine years of my life honing this. I have no other marketable skills. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, use me for this one thing because I can't do anything you're else. Like, you're like a kitchen gadget that only does <laughs> yeah. one thing. You are a <laughs> strawberry corer. <laughs> oh, my God. I, yes. No, you're not, yes. Steven. You're more than that. I, I use um, my apple core all the time, though. <laughs> I, I'm not, it's, it's like one of the best what things do you, What do you use it for? Coring That's apple. between me and my... <laughs> <laughs> what happened? happens in one's own home. <laughs> All right. Not to be I have one more question. We're just going to make this a little uh-huh. tiny little segment. It's going to be a little baby two minute yeah. video. It's going to be great. This is the segment of the show called Can I Do This? I've written a will. It's a very nice, sophisticated will. Before I export save as, I'm going to change the font to Wingdings and 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 save the will, export it, and then it's I weird. proceed to walk out my oh, door. I, I like file it with whoever, and then I go get hit by a bus. Wait, is Wingdings is that, is that words or the symbol? No, it's, it's symbols. symbols. But it is a language like recognized in Microsoft Word in that area, that family of technology. Honestly, so. I think you can make it work because what we'd have to do is get yeah, a certified imported. translation. Yeah, you have to get a certified translation okay so what is would, that you would how do make, i do that i would have to hire somebody <laughs> to certify that w- it is actually in english yeah <laughs> they, they would wing. have to yeah you'd have to actually run it i, I would have to make like, a second you, copy of the will run it through an oc it, yeah I'll do just, an ocr recognize text and then highlight and just do a quick yeah i would have to literally do that and then attach that to the signed will and let the court know that this was a true copy <laughs> uh, of the wingdings will I, and <laughs> honestly what, what and if the court really wanted to and someone uh, objected to this will we could literally in the courtroom type it out in wingdings <laughs> word for word yeah. and hopefully it pops up I in think, english i think that somebody would have to do that automated just change the font and see what it looks like yeah i think someone would have to do that but then just to make Make sure there was nothing lost in the scanning OCR. I, I think they might have to take like a, a, a character map yeah. for Wingdings and compare it to the will to make sure it comes out accurate. And it's like 50 pages long. It'll too. somehow cost like a gazillion <laughs> dollars to do that. I this. would charge so much money to do that because. <laughs> Like, I would my hourly rate would, would go up. It would I'm gonna James time. a full hourly rate. I'm like just give him just give him two fifty an hour. I'm tired. Go home. Yeah. It would take a lot of time to do, but I think I'm gonna charge extra as hazard pay. <laughs> or because or because Because I'm gonna throw my computer. Exactly. And then I'm gonna have to buy me a new computer. I'm gonna have to buy a new computer and fix my wall. <laughs> All the things I'll date invoice you for. Here's a flat fee that includes a replacement laptop. I'm no, no, have two get, laptops. I'm gonna have to get. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get counseling for my dog, who's been very <laughs> upset that she saw me throw a laptop. Yeah. Um. There's just a lot of. Man, you have to buy me a bottle yeah. of scotch. You have to like all the yeah. things yeah. you'll need to do. Yeah, and it's got to be good scotch so it's smooth. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't, yeah, yeah. You can't read a wing here digs. Are the, here are the approved Will brands for skin. this task. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. No, I'm not going to start with like, what, like an eight year? Yeah. Come on. Have you seen this? Come on. And it'll, be, it'll probably be like a 12 page Will and Wing Dings, too. It won't I'm, like I'm going to need page. this guy to be one year old per page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Let's talk about Tenth and Taxes. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know. Post a comment. Guys, this show's pretty small, so you can help us grow by doing a couple different things. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video interact comment subscribe to our youtube channel put those notifications on too or i'm gonna come after you um also if you could share it if you're watching on facebook that'd be great hey also if you are listening on a podcasting app most likely apple podcast because i think that's the one that predominantly people use except spotify is coming up quick they just bought other they bought gimlet media my favorite podcasting they company bought the last podcast network. They, they, they're exclusive yeah yeah they're they're they're, mm-hmm. they're really they're building out. Bunch. guys uh yeah go ahead leave us a five-star review hopefully or i mean you know if you're gonna roast us i guess do that you know let's we'll be funny about it I, yeah. yeah, honestly, a five star review, but just like a really like scathing like written review would be great. Um, but not about <laughs> me though. I'm sensitive. <laughs> yeah, my, fe- <laughs> my feelings are no. Sick. Come at me. I'll, I'll take that. Stephen, what are some of the things you'll do for them? You'll make them a really fat, awesome will. You'll make them a trust. We'll do probably wills, we'll do trust powers of attorneys, health directives. You'll make sure their life insurance is in a total mess. Yeah, you won't. You won't leave it to. People you don't want to leave it to. You'll make sure their kids are probably good, right? Yeah. Which- the point is, is that if you need legal services, Stephen and James are the guys you can call up. 404-939-7562. You can also uh, email us, info at modernestateplanning.com. Um, or if you have a question, you can also email us questions. If you have little voice questions. That'd be For the podcast. Too. For the podcast. Yeah, we'll answer them on the podcast. Um, questions at let's talk about death and taxes.com. So that won't be legal advice. I'll just be, I'll, we'll just... Lightly commentary. It would be commentary. <laughs> commentary. Commentary. <laughs> also, if you're a really diehard day one fan, you should go download our free PDF. It's awesome. It's a banger PDF, and it is listed in the description. Um, it is a primer for people who have not yet thought about estate planning or done estate planning. Basically, d- giving you like a list of mistakes that like you should probably avoid. Because like, hey, death and dying is like difficult and hard to think about, and it's hard to do right. Go check it out. It's in the description down below um guys thanks so much for watching have a great day 